Good morning, everyone. The time is now 10.05 a.m. Welcome to the joint meeting of the Family Provided Care Management Information Legislative Committee and the Brooklyn Family Support Service Advisory Council. Welcome. And that's a mouthful to say. Before we start and letting everyone proceed with anything, as a lot of people are coming on, still like going oi kavat moments or rushing in like so fast, just to remind everyone, we do have housekeeping rules that is very important. Now, very simple instruction. As you know, on the bottom, and it might look different on the phone or a tablet, we know that. That's why there's a button called the more button. The more button will give you other things to add in, like original backgrounds, in cap, uh, as in, in, enable your encaption so you can keep track of what I'm saying, or Lucina, Maria, or Debbie, Rose, or any of the uh, other people. But I will remind you, everyone, please show respect and one at a time speak, because we want to be fair, and everything we're saying is duty noted. The recording is noted and the words are noted. Please also, if you're having a problem getting your microphone on, as you look at the bottom and the bottom left, looks like a lowercase i with a circle is another way to get the phone number for this meeting. And the meeting ID number is always available there. You can merge them both as a phone and your visual screen. As you see me, I'm in one screen as the advisory, but you hear my voice on a, another laptop. It's called multitasking. So, you also have, as I said before, the camera, which you do see me, bald-headed man with a red shirt with blue and brown glasses. Uh, you also have the chat, which is available for, to put your questions, your comments, your announcements, and everything in the kitchen sink. Also, the raise hand is right over there as well. It's called the smiley little face with a plus button. You click on that and you get your hand raised. Not with my physical hand, a real hand raised. And we will see it. Lucina will see it. Maria will see it. Deborah as well will see it with the hand raised. So, as I remind you, whoever raised their hand first will go first. Whoever's second is second. Whoever's third, who's third. Whoever's fourth is fourth. As I remind you that every, all the devices are also located in the More button, which is your setting area. Please make sure that all your systems are on. Make sure everything is okay. So therefore, we will proceed with the regular program as well. And as a reminder, everyone, it is very important to please, please mute your microphones if you're not speaking. It, we need to show the courtesy and respect to anyone. So I am reminding you guys, please keep your microphones muted. Now, I want to welcome our dais today. Let's welcome first the Family Provider and Care Management Information Committee. Unfortunately, Rose Sal could not be with us today, but also with us, and she's also the chair of the Brooklyn Advisory Council, Ms. Deborah Greif is here. And she's raising her hand, doesn't have, and she's smiling. But she's not alone. We have the Legislative Committee. And forgive me, folks, if the thing is going off and on, because as you know, we have storms in the area. Uh, the Legislative Committee, let's welcome Lucina Clark and Marie Wilson, both co chairs of the Legislative Committee. And they're both raising their hands and smiling. And as they see the sun behind them, which I'm jealous, which I pick on them later, but that's a good laugh. But also the advisory council is all, some of our exec members are here today. Uh, not all here today. So I will say Sandy Naper, me, as you know, me as the track of all trades and our executive assistant, Ann Menino. So just want everyone to know this is our day is for today. Before we ask them to do their presentation, we're going to ask the, everyone to please have your hands up to have any announcement. And I'm just going to remind everyone, if you want your announcements to be on not just the Advisory Council's website, but the DD Council website, 
We're going to ask you to please make sure you email to Brian Rothstein at hhcsny.org. And the advisory council, which is still the same email, which you guys get, uh, we, me and Brian do send out emails. Yes, I know we're paying the rare end, but guess what? That means we're doing our job. So I see hands are up, and I'm guessing I know whose hand is up because I'm guessing. If I'm guessing right, somebody better give me a bonus. I'm just kidding. Uh, yes, I guess it was. At this time, I'm going to ask Sandy Neighbor to please. Um, Sandy, you're up first. And I don't hear you, Sandy. Sandy, uh, we still don't hear you. Sandy, we still don't hear you at all, and I think uh, you, you are unmuted, but we do not hear you. We'll come back to you uh, at this moment because we see that you may have some microphone or volume that is not up, but right now I do not hear you at all. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with Pat Lou. Can you please unmute yourself? Good morning. Announcement. Announcement. Good morning, everyone. Pat Liu, Family Support Coordinator from GHO. Um, would like to announce that we have ongoing waiver uh, service available. That's especially for they have. They have with Alvo and Sybase they have and job training program. And our family support service are uh, case management service that will help the assist family who are new to the system. Uh, we will assist the family and getting the evaluation and hopefully to get them uh, go through the whole thing, the whole OPW eligibility process and eventually identify a appropriate CCO that will, they would like to join. And um, now also we, I want to uh, mm, Share that we have a contract with CDNY with this family who's speaking Korean or Chinese to do the uh, intake. So uh, if you have any question, you can reach out to me. My phone number is 718-307-6563. Pat Liu from GHO. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Can you please make sure you put that into the chat, please? Yes, I will do that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Maria Wilson from CP uh, Unlimited. You can unmute yourself. Willis, Chris, Willis. Willis, thank you. <laughs> Good morning, all. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Yeah, okay. Um, as you mentioned, Maria Willis, CP Unlimited, I have one announcement. On May 22nd, there's going to be a day have an Article 16 open house. Um, Wednesday, May 22nd from 1030 to 130 at 921 East New York Avenue in Brooklyn. We want you to join us to learn about CP Unlimited's comprehensive therapies, classes, activities, unique gardening program, and care and support for people 18 plus with intellectual and developmental disabilities in Brooklyn. Um, for more information, you can contact Nandani Sabajo at N S A B A J O at C P of N Y S dot org. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. Uh, Lucina Clark, co chair also of the Legislative Committee. And just to let everyone know, Marie is also the other co chair for the Legislative. So let me add the famous Lucina Clark. Hi, good morning, everyone. I hope um, you're having a great morning. The sun is out as we see. Um, my name is Lucina Clark. I am the executive director of My Timing, also the chair of the legislative committee. We're having, we know that May is um, Mental Health Awareness Month. I like to call it Emotional Wellness Awareness Month. And at the end of May, May 31st, we're having a uh, you and your mental health. It is all about self-care and your mental health being aware. So I will send the flyer. It's May 31st at um, 
My Timings location, 640 Parkside Avenue from 10 to 12, is really having a conversation about your mental health and self-care. So thank you very much. I'll put it into the, I did put it into the, um, the, the, the chat. Looking forward to having wonderful conversations. So noted, it's in the chat, Lucina. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, Sandy Naper, did you fix your microphone? Uh, Chris, she's emailing it, and then I'll read it. So noted. Uh, we'll do her. We'll do her. I'll do her after the next person. Uh, Ms. Bye. Robinson. Ms. Robinson. Yes. Hi. Good morning, Sabrina Robinson from Life Adjustment Center. We currently have openings in Day Have, Day Have Without Walls and calm have. We're looking to start a Saturday rec program in the beginning of June. My information is in the chat and I will email over a flyer. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Uh, Thank you. QSAC. Good morning. QSAC has openings for family reimbursement, non-Medicaid service coordination, and housing advocacy. My information is in the chat. You can always reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, QSAC. Uh, Deborah, if you're ready for Sandy's announcement, or you want me to wait? Let someone else go ahead. I just got I'll it. I want to make sure it came in. Okay. Right. Uh, Chinese Planning Council. Thanks, Chris. Um, we still have family reimbursement funding left. If you still have any families um, looking for family reimbursement, feel free to do referral. My information is at the track. Thank you. Thank you, Chinese Planning Council. Good to hear from your voice. And let me just move down because I see another. Oh. And I see we have someone actually here from the library, which I'll give her a second to get her microphone on. Uh, oh. uh, care design. Hi, um, good morning. I didn't have any announcements um, to provide. I just put my name and my, in for, uh, my name and where I'm from. Thank you. Just making sure, because you never know, you might have something new. Thank you, thank you. No problem. Chris, I can I, do Sandy. I could do oh, Sandy's right now. Okay, good. let her know that her micro, her volume level is low. I did, but I have her announcement, so let me do the best I can. Go ahead. Let me hold on. On Thursday, Sandy, yeah, go ahead. On Thursday, May 9th, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., Adapt Community Network is having Dr. Judy Grossman. Associate Director of the Center for Developing Child and Family at the Ackerman Institute for the Family discussing the impact of stress on parent and child well-being. Spanish and Mandarin interpretation will be provided. Registration is required. To register, email, in lowercase, familyconnect at adaptcommunitynetwork.org or click on I can't do the uh, the in Zoom. I'll just do that, and then I'll, we'll see how. It, Chris, it's on the advisory. If you can get it into the chat somehow, on Thursday, May sixteenth, from ten a.m. to twelve p.m., a Deaf Community Network is having Nadine Maher, BCBA, presenting toiletry made easy. You'll learn effective tips and strategies for success in toilet training. The flyers attached, Spanish and Mandarin. Interpretation will be provided. Registration is required. To register, email Family Connect at adopt at adapt. I'm sorry, community network org, or you click on their Zoom from Adapt for webinars. Uh, she apologizes that her microphone volume is not on. This is not the regular day for the advisory council, so she apologizes why uh, she can't stay for the meeting. But Sandy, I thank you very much. Uh, for giving this announcement, and yes, whatever announcements Sandy has been sending us has been put on both the Brooklyn Family Support Advisory Council's website, remember it's now.org, not.com, as well 
as the Brooklyn DD Council's website. We will make sure that any information that she has sent to us will be shared immediately. Thank you. Carrie's next. Uh, hey, Carrie Banks from the Brooklyn Public Library include. Hi, all. Good to see you again this, this morning. Sorry, I'm just coming from another meeting. Um, so a little over shimmel, but um, I'm getting here. Um, so we have three really exciting events coming up this uh, later at this month. The first is a virtual workshop on when to disclose. So people who are going into um, any kind of environment where they may need to disclose their disability or they may want to disclose their ability, their disability, or they're just thinking about disclosing their disability, right? Um, when do we do this? When do we need to do this in an educational setting or in a work setting? Um, and that we are partnering with the Brooklyn Transition and College Access Center on that. And that will be on May 16th from 4.30 to 5.30. It's a virtual workshop. Um, I'll, I'll put the uh, how to register in the chat, but basically you go to the Brooklyn Public Library's website and search for inclusive services. Um, then two days later, we have a busy last week of May. We have a parent IEP member training and we're partnering with Include NYC to provide that. And of course, the, the IEP meeting is where it all happens in terms of determining services and, and looking for placement and things like that for, for um, individuals with disabilities in the school systems. And um, a lot goes on and they're hard to follow and people use a lot of acronyms and and technical terms and things like that. And the parent member is there to help support the parent and interpret those things. Um, so this is the this is the training for them. There are other things that people have to do to become a paid parent member, but this is the beginning training. And the nice thing about this is you can take it even if you don't necessarily want to be a parent member. Um, and it is really one of the best overviews of the IEP meeting and also um, the entire process for getting special education services. And that's on Saturday, May 18th from 1030 to 2 at the Crown Heights Library. And I will put that information in the chat momentarily. And finally, and this is actually my favorite. I know I say everything's my favorite, but this really is my favorite. Um, we have it. The title of the workshop is Autistic Adulthood Panel Discussion. Um, and we are featuring Michael John Carley um, and Nicole Russell from Autistic Adults of NYC. Of course, Michael John Carley is a, a writer, has five books on, on living as an autistic adult and supporting other um, parents of autistic children. And he is currently the uh, manages the programs for autistic students at NYU. So, the, uh, and they will be joined by another Michael who's, um, I'm sorry, I didn't confirm this, so I don't have his full information, but he is a District 75 student who is um, graduating this year and he'll be speaking about preparing um, for adulthood. So we're really excited about this. Um, and this will be at the Central Library from 6.30 to 7.30 on May 20th. Again, I'll put all this information in the chat and Chris, I'll send you the flyers in PDF form. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? As chair, I have one thing. Uh, can we just Chris, clarify uh, one thing, um, Chris? I have to go clarify. Ahead, go, go ahead, Madam Chair. Uh, Carrie, yeah. parent members are not paid. It's a stipend they're giving. Stipend. The reason right. I say this, and I want everyone to understand, you said paid, and then a parent member who happens to be on disability right. can lose their disability. It is a stipend, and also please remember that if you choose not to be to fulfill it and become a parent member, please understand it does help you with your child. And plus, remember, and I say this, and not every CSE team accepts and works with the parent member the way they should be, even yeah. though it's by law. No, Carrie didn't say anything negative. She's saying things correctly. <laughs> I just don't want any problem for anyone who's on SSI or SSD or public assistance. You're not going to lose your benefits. Stipends are allowed because you're a parent of a child with disabilities, especially going through the New York City Department of Ed, whether in District 75 Community Special Ed or the specialized schools, you should take the training so that you know how to protect your child as well as yourself. But Carrie did a great job, thank you. And I just, the other thing I need to clarify quickly, Sandy Naples put everything that we said in the chat already. So I didn't read the HHTP part, but it's already in the chat. 
So I want to thank you, Carrie, as well as Sandy Naper. Thank you, Christopher. Okay, continue. Uh, thank you, Deborah. That, yes, Carrie, uh, can you please, uh, and I'm going to make this clear to everyone. Everyone, some of your PDFs are not up to date. Could you please send it as a regular picture leaflet? Because <laughs> that's easier because some of the PDFs some of you guys have are not up to date. This 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 for the last one I got with a PDF was late was the year 1998. I don't know how I got that one, <laughs> but I'm just asking if you guys can please um, if it's a new PDF for this version, this year's version, or last year, the last four years, fine. But if it can be sent it as a JP, and I might say it wrong, so Carrie, you can correct me on that. But a picture one will be easier because then families can see it much clearly. And they can copy it from the website. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, thank you, Chris. I will send it as a JPEG um, as yes, soon JPEG. as I can. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's been, the name I was looking for. Yeah, that's going to take me a little longer, but we should get there. No worries. No rush. Every, and I will and I will mention that in a few minutes. Uh, I know we had IRI. He was the last one. Uh, Al Gibb, do you have any announcement? I know I saw you. I'm here, Chris. Uh, no real announcements, but, you know, we still have our crisis program up and running in Brooklyn. I uh, included my uh, email and uh, phone number in the chat. So if anybody wants to reach out, they're more than welcome. Thank you, Al. You're uh, welcome. Okay. Have a good day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just to remind everyone, uh, on my announcements, just to be very clear, unfortunately, Rochelle was supposed to be here, and Brian is away on conference. A message has been very clear. Uh, number one, as I said in the beginning, anyone who wants us to put it on their, the council's website, and, the, and it does say it on the script, councils with an S, uh, please email it to Brian and the advisory council. The advisory council's website does get updated on the weekend, so everyone gets up-to-date information. Uh, Deborah, you don't need to raise your hand, but let me finish first, please. Thank you. Just uh, when you've done, give me. Yeah. Uh, just to remind everyone now, Deborah and Lucina and Marie are going to remind you this, and I'm going to remind you this too. And it's very important that everyone here and say, yes, we are, but I, but we do need everyone to please. I'm just kidding. And I know it's a little delay on my other screen. Please, 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 everyone, please get your families to register. Thank you to the agency. And I know Deborah's going to say that. That's why I'm not mentioning the name. Please register for the Family Support Fair for June 5th in Brooklyn. You are, please make sure to register for the fair. If I mention this now, it will be mentioned every time. Deborah, the chair, uh, you don't need to raise your hand. I know I see you. I know, but this is going to stay in announcements. Uh, today is a very, very, very important, uh, very, it's important. Um, if you can do me a favor, Chris, and just lower my hand. Today's, a, I want to wish one of our members, Ms., who's our executive assistant, Mrs. Ann Menino, today is her birthday. So, Ann, we're all going to, and we can't do it all at once on the mic because it could blow the mics up, but we're all going to wish you a very happy birthday. And we want to thank you for all the help and assistance you've been given to both councils. And we want you to have a great day today. That's my big, big, big announcement. And, uh, Madam Chair, you did forget this is also Anne's eighth anniversary. Thank you very much. Here. You're welcome. You're very, very welcome. And congratulations for being with us for eight years. We appreciate my, all your help. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, oh. Thank you, Madam Chair. Stay on for a second because as I do this announcement, I'm going to explain the procedure one more time because some people did come in a little late. You know what I mean? Because now it's time to have our fun time. And now I'm going to explain this very carefully. Each speaker, each our three, and I'll say co-chair slash chair because it's hard to say it. Each are going to speak 
about the budget and what's coming up in the near future. And you're going to get a lot of good information today. And there is some additional information that's going to go into the chat regarding housing. So I will be putting that in the chat in a few minutes. Our first speaker, these are the speakers will be going first in baseball. First, Deborah Greif, Lucina Clark, Maria, and then yours truly. After all of them finish speaking, then it will be, then we'll do questions and comments. So I hope everyone, please write down any questions do you have. And I'm guessing we just had a little Wi-Fi outage a little bit, because as you know, we, are, we have storms in the area, and storms did maybe damage some areas, so please be alert on your Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm going to ask Deborah, and then Luc and oh. Deborah will introduce Lucina. Then Lucina will introduce Maria. Then Maria will introduce me. So, guys, Here the, we party go. is all, the party is all yours. See you later. See you later. Good morning, everybody. As you know, I'm chair today. Right now, I'm going to be chairperson of the advisory council. Yes, I am the co-chair of the family provider and parent information committee. I just want to be, I'm going to do that piece first. We are not going to have a meeting in June because we're using the family support fair as our meeting. But I would like everybody to think of subjects and things we should be tackling for this committee. And I would like you to email it to us. That's myself and Rose Saul. But it's very important. We'd like your attendance to be kept up and more. And please bring families on. Also, if you would like us to sometimes do an evening or a weekend meeting, we, weekend we may be hard, but the evening maybe, you need to let us know. I'm talking about the Family Provider and Care Management Information Committee. Else, I want everyone to know, yes, I know CCOs do give their own training. But we, as the council, hold the ears and the eyes and ears of the families, professionals, of and the community. So please participate with us. It's very, very important. Now I'm going to the advisory council. First of all, maybe I will acknowledge the budget didn't do everything we liked, but that happens, and it also means that we need to work for the next forever. We have to work forever. And I know Lucina and Maria will be agreeing with me. We all have to work together in this. We need to make sure we have partnerships and friendships with all the legislators, but more important, their staff. We need to make sure that we are seen at local community boards, local civic groups, community precinct, community councils. If you see that a elected official is having a town hall show up, you have to bring your child, and if they can't deal with it, we'll say your child is one of their constituents. Now, I know that everybody's not too thrilled about a lot of the issues with the reimbursement commit reimbursement ADM. Well, the more people put it in writing, if you have to just email it to me, I will forward it because we are trying to update and make more changes to fix the allowable and non and change things from non allowable to allowable. We're working very, very hard. Also, if you know or happen to be on the Brook on this, I'm sorry, the statewide developmental disability advisory council, please go to those committee meetings and their meetings and in public session, bring it up. Especially the medical committee needs to work with us so that we can make sure that OPWDD understands we need the correct medical guidelines. Because a child with a developmental disabilities needs are not the same as someone who may just be have just a physical develop disability, but no developmental or someone who's in the has, maybe just have one like a mental or emotional. It is extremely important for you to understand and know the differences. But what's even more important is we have to make sure that the. When elected officials hear about our issues, you need to, we need to educate them. I mean, I may have a child with IDD. Others have children with, in the autistic spectrum, may have more than one developmental disability or maybe dual or triple diagnosed. That includes physical as well as mental, emotional. And don't be surprised, many of our children, individuals do have alcohol and substance abuse issues, especially if they were born to a mother, 
or father abused either alcohol or drugs before or during pregnancy, it does affect everybody severely. It's extremely important. Now, I want you to know the statewide meeting is going to be on Wednesday, June 12th. Yes, we're still at the, the Manhattan location will be the, it's supposed to be still the Center for Family Support. Yes, they're meeting in Albany again, and there are some, there are the statewide lo other locations. We, as soon as I'm given the locations, you know that we share it immediately. And why do I say this is important? Well, you do hear from me. You know that I let you know with whatever I do learn or update, but I want you to let OPWDD know what the issues are. The role of the family sport is this. This was made, and I want you to know reimbursement was the first test pilot for our family support program. The role of the family support councils to let the Brook, the well, in reference to Brooklyn, it's my local Brooklyn DDRO know, as well as Manhattan's, you know, central <laughs> office, and then we let Albany know what's needed to keep our children at home with us for as long as possible. The other goal was to prepare them eventually to be in residence. Now, before you start saying, I'm pushing, no, no, no. Some children may need to be a 24 seven because that's appropriate for them. Or they may be able to handle a supportive apartment, IRA, or they may be able to, the family may want to work where the child still lives at home. Something happens to mom and dad. But the a, the family with the a, with OPWDD and the agency that's doing care managing and other services can work to see that the individual can still live in their family home and still get the help and support they need. This is a decision that the families make and that I respect. I also respect when it comes to medical decisions, if and then your child needs to be on certain medications, that's fine. Do not ever feel embarrassed or upset or think I will not accept that. My issue is this, if it works for you, that's fine. If it doesn't, but you need help, the advisory council's roles are to be there to support and help you so that you can have, you and your family member with the development ability can have a loving, protective life. And if they can, are capable of maybe working, we tell you just be careful and watch for their benefits because we are working with the nationwide ARC in New York City's AHRC. We want to make sure that they raise the income threshold levels for this. Our children, and it's a social security law in existence since 1939. Social security was started 1936, but 1939, they ordered, they, they then passed the Widows and Orphan Act, which means that if the par a parent dies and it's been updated, so now it currently is this. Whichever parent made more money, the child, since you know our population, our children have to be diagnosed before the age of 22 to be able to, one, be, have, be uh, saying they have a development ability, but Social Security needs to see that. Then the child can collect under their parents but they cannot make more than $1 for the mother and or the father, whoever's the higher wage earner. We want the income levels because what our families, when I was working, yes, I did work, my income level is not that high. So my child may have to collect under his late father. And because as it says, it's either the parent becomes disabled, retires or passes away. No, no such order. I didn't make the order. This is what's told to us. We don't want them to lose their Medicaid coverage. We want them to keep their Medicaid waiver. Also, if at the moment they're under 1,500, this is for New York State only, they pay for the Part A and B Medicare when they are eligible after 24 months collecting under the parent who has the higher SS Social Security benefit. The child will then be known as SSDI. We'll keep their SSI Medicaid as well as have waiver, Medicaid waiver, but we have to work together. That's a very important subject. And people look at me like, why don't you want them to work? Excuse me, if you have to, do you know how many parents are right now in credit card debt because they're so embarrassed and they, they said, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll get the agency in trouble. No, 
It's important that you shouldn't be in credit card debt because these safeguards have been gone through class action lawsuits to help the families. So agencies, as well as parents, whenever you are offered training on how to work and understand your benefits, whether it's SSI, SSDI, public assistant, Medicaid, Medicare, SNAP, you need to take those trainings and really understand it because if you have to, if the child is, is told they have to do a spend down when they shouldn't, you do may have to go for what's called a fair hearing. And you need to have the correct paperwork and understand what you're saying to the judge. It has been many families like myself have won because I did this for a sibling as well as my son. We, they have the right and this was fought for so they can collect the correct benefits. We want to make sure that they keep their medical coverage. We still have many of our children have pre-existing medical conditions. So I want everyone to understand we need constantly need to educate the elected officials, their staff. Don't be upset if you can't get to talk to the elected official. Even if they speak to you, they're still going to hand their information to the elected official staff. Sometimes, and I love all my elected officials, and I do work with both sides. But I will tell you something. Sometimes I prefer to talk to the staff member that's dealing with this issue. Why? They'll give me more time. I've gone from the elected official can talk to me maybe 15, 20 minutes, half hour tops. But guess what? The staff member, I've had sometimes one to two hour meetings where we were able to, we went by issue by issue on what's needed to advocate to help our population. And that's important. And yes, I do this year round because it never ends. My child and I both have, I don't have development disability. He does, but we have to advocate year round. That's why also we advocate strongly for transportation. We fought very hard in congesting pricing. I am not going through the whole thing. I'm just giving you an example. By us fighting since 2019, when it was slowly coming into to be hammered out what issues were needed, we were able and we're advocating to make sure that when our children who have to go to different programs or medical settings in a in a licensed van geared to take our children, we don't want them to be charged. They have the right to get into the congestion price zone. But because we advocated, they're listening to us. You have issues with the MTA, accessory, buses, trains, whatever, by making effective complaints and talking to the different parties. That includes New York City DOT. That includes if you're having issues with sample your garbage being picked up. It does affect all of us. And remember, as long as your child is a red is an American citizen, whether born here or naturalized, they can they're allowed to vote. So register them at the age of eighteen. No, we're not telling you what party to put them in. Why? That's your family's decision. The only thing we are asking why we want you to register is for this reason. There's when we say I have over a thousand families across New York City, or no, I'm sorry, Brooklyn, registered to vote, and many of them are your constituents. They get very nervous, and they said it's not just family; they're extended family, their friends, people that work with them. We show them how many people are attached to us. So please hear exactly what we're saying. Lucina and Maria Wilson will be issuing and explaining. And we are, the, the three of us work are going to work together for the next year and forever because we want to make sure our families are getting the real true help they need. Yes, we know right now because of COVID, it messed up a lot of issues with family support programs. Yes, we know about the RPs. At the moment, Brooklyn is only going to do two. We cannot do the ADM for reimbursement because there are agencies that still have money. No, we're not blaming them because the ADM changes and the non allowable allowances as well as the medical justification threw everybody for a loop. Yes, they heard my mouth. Yes, you're right. Deborah's mouth was big and I take great pride that I fought for it. And I'm getting more and more they're working with us. It's not going to happen overnight. So if anyone yells at me, what? You didn't do nothing. 
Really? Yes, I did. Remember also something very important. You see the word advisory? New York State has it, whether it's in the state, city, even federal. Thereby, law have to have advisory committees or councils. Our role is to advise, not order. I would love to, but we advise them. We hope they listen to us with what we feel would be good, because remember, we are customers. But if they choose not to, I can't, I can be very upset, but I have to know that I did my job. But that doesn't mean I'm giving up. I sit on my local community board. We advise, example, we told New York City DOT we didn't want certain turn signals done a certain way unless we knew it would help everybody. They didn't do everything the way we wanted. They heard us and chose to do what they wanted. But we need to know, that you need to know, that it still made them think twice because I opened my mouth with, in a polite, effective form, form why and the commu my community wanted things a certain way. We need to work together as parents, professionals, of course, individuals, and friends, but we need to work as a team. Now, Brooklyn's priorities for this RFP, when it comes out, I don't know. We are doing two housings. One, first one is housing advocacy. We want uh, that agencies who do get the RP for housing, they do go to the housing court with the family because housing court's very a, a very daunting, confusing place to be. Believe me, it is. We want them to also help guide on what programs are out there that can help them with getting their rent, the budget, or if you're not in an accessible house or apartment, how to help you get to one that is truly accessible. The second priority, and yes, also, let me add this, it is extremely important. I want an agency to have staffed person that is, goes to the court with the family. Believe me, the housing judges and their housing lawyer, yes, all housing courts have their own lawyer, to li really respect our advocates, and they do work with them to make sure everything is done correctly. Number two is housing the, the when you we need to have our EMODs modifications. Why? There's a major waiting list. We know it even includes like you need a special handle to get into the bathtub. You may need a specialized shower chair or you may need ramps or you need to have devices because you can't turn lights on and off yourself but you don't know the right way to put them on. That will be, is what we put in. We are waiting for Albany to tell us when the next RFP will be put out. If you are having issues with reimbursement, ADM, you can let us know, but please show up to the, the statewide on June 12th. But also, if you can, of course, you can always send us an email. Or you can go through the Advisory Council's website to the OPWD website and put your complaints in person. Now, guess what? You know that, well, you know that now they're going across New York State, the OPWD, for the forms. So get the first one is going to be this Monday, Long Island at Hawpaw, their OPW regional office, May 14th from 1 to 3 p.m. They're also, now, I'm only going to talk in our area. Next one will be on June 18th, Hudson Valley, from 4.30 to 6.30, New City Library. And the all these addresses will be on the, on the advisory councils. The Bronx is going to be July 9th, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Lefrak Auditorium of the Price Center, Albert Einstein College of Medicine, 1301 Morris Park Avenue. Bronx, New York. You can register online. I believe you also, if you cannot physically be there, I mean, you can watch it. Don't quote me on everything. But you can also send written testimony because they will only give you three to five minutes the most to speak. So you can, I would suggest, put all your feelings and comments in writing and have it emailed through 
and the information will be in the and it will be in various different languages that OPWDD has and you can register online so they have the strategic you also they have online you can do view the strategic plan and also view it in plain language so if you don't understand their uh, government ease language it can be done so I have given you the basic report and yes the Advisory Council will be participating with the Brooklyn DD Council on Wednesday, June 5th at the Family Support Fair at Brooklyn College Student Union Building. We are only doing resource fairs this year. We are not going to do workshops at this moment. We're coming back and we're very happy to be back at Brooklyn College. So that part is there. Also, the Brooklyn the ED Council will be still doing their meeting the third Monday because of Memorial Day on Monday, May 20, 20th from 10 a.m. to 12. Try to get a 945, and it'll be done at Zoom. Brian Rothstein is our chair. He will keep you and we will keep you informed about this. Does anybody have any questions or concerns have want to ask me? Christopher, is anybody asking me anything? Ah, I don't. I see they're not. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce the under the co-chairs of the Legislative Committee, a wonderful woman I've known for a very long time. I think we're sisters from other parents because we politically think the same way in coming to advocacy, right, my dear? Because yes, we yes. believe we do it year round. I like we waiting for budget. Some of the the Am I right? Is, am yes, I correct you do. Them? Yes, you're correct. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank so you so much. Is... Oh, are you ready? Sorry. You finished, Deborah? Yes, what I was saying, I'm going to mute so that no, there's no static or background information to affect you. Okay, Go right on you. and thank you, Lucina. <laughs> You're welcome. Good morning. Good morning, all. Thank you, Deborah and Chris, for allowing Maria and I, my other co chair, to be a part of this forum. It's so wonderful doing a joint collaboration. You can get as much information out. Again, my name is Lucina Clark. I am the executive director of My Time Inc., a very special place to be for parents of a child with autism or other mental disabilities. You know, it gives me great pleasure and honor to share this. Um, this committee with Miss Maria Willis. And I am really honored to do this because we have, you know, we are very fortunate this year to have wonderful people working on a legislative team, you know, including Deborah too. And, you know, I support the work that, you know, the, the, the Family Support Advisory Council is doing because this is teamwork. When getting to our legislators about teamwork, my part will be talking to you about as a parent what you need to do and want to continue to do, where Maria is more astute on really connecting with a lot of the legislators. She's always in Albany, so I wish I could be there as much, but she has a lot of insight with the legislators. My role, you know, as working with the parents and families, especially our parents, is making sure that you are aware of how you can advocate as well. Like Deborah was saying, we can't wait to advocate on the month of January when the, the budget is about to be, you know, talk about and given information. This is a consistent, consistent thing we have to, we have to be persistent. We have to know who our legislators are. Right now when we deal with a lot of the state budgets, it's not really the city council, it's more of the assembly and the state senators that you have to tackle. You know, Brian, I always give Brian credit for sending us a lot of information. And as the providers, you know, our role as the providers is to send this information to the parents, the parents of the clients that you are seeing every single day. They won't be the one talking, are the parents. So when they come into the day have or the day programs, or whatever program you have, send the materials to the families. Most of them, when you're doing an intake, you have the family's emails, send and send the information. So when they see that we are working together to help them, you know, advocate for what.
needed for their loved ones. Because if your loved ones is not taken care of, you as a parent gets very uneasy. I want this, I want that. So you can be part of this process as being more informed. I tell people, you know, we're so busy on the, on the phones, Googling and watching Facebook and, and, and Instagram. Uh, the time you take to do that sometimes, Google who my assembly member is. Google who is my senator. So that way you can follow them sometimes as a parent. You can easily follow them on their, their Facebook pages or their Instagram pages. You can do that. For us as a provider, we really cannot do that. You know, as a, you know, it doesn't have to affect, affect our lobbying and whatever is like that. But as a parent, you can follow them and see what they're doing. And even sometimes even call their office, like Deborah was saying. We won't always get the um, senators and the assembly post to be in our meetings, but we have their representatives. And sometimes it's better to talk with the representatives because you have more time and you can talk about your issues or say, you know, my name is Lucina. I have a child with a disability. My child is 18. What's happening with Social Security? What's happening to medic? You know, so all these are the important questions you can ask them. So as a parent, I know your life is quite busy because raising your child with a disability can take a lot. And is quite overwhelming. But during that process, you got to be involved. Changes can only occur when you speak for your child. Yes, we have some individuals with a disability who is quite vocal. And then we have some who are non-speaking individuals. You have to be their voices. You have to make the commitment to make sure that you're getting the information when the budget is cut. And you wonder, what? Well, why are they cutting my services? Why isn't access to right working? Why isn't Social Security, why is Social Security doing this to us? So you got to be involved. It is, it is critical that you keep up to date. Even though we here is trying to inform you or giving you information, it is your right and your responsibilities and accountability to know who who is representing you in your district. You know, it's very simple. Just go check out the website. We, we're going to be working on with um, Deborah also. I know for the Family Support Fair, which is coming up on June. In June, please register. You know, I've been in schools doing workshops with our program. And listen, people have been excited. I love having the QR code. I will show it to them when I'm doing the meetings. And they will just take their camera, come up to the QR code, and just like, oh, Miss Clark, I registered. So I'm really excited about that. It's very simple to register. And it's free. Let your parents so it's free so they can participate that's another way of advocating coming out and getting information so that's my piece i want to thank um the the family support service advisory council chris and deborah for allowing us and the kmajra information team allowing us to be able to do this collaboration i love this more don't you maria it's so much much better we are showing a collaboration we are showing a cohesiveness we're showing a unity so when parents when we speaking we not speaking for us as a provider we are also speaking to to elevate you to empower you in getting the right information so now i'm going to pass it over to my coach and my beautiful coach miss maria willis who has been in this business for so so long so maria thank you so much and take it away thank you so much lucina um as you mentioned my name is maria willis i'm the co-chair for the legislative committee um i work for cp unlimited previously known as cerebral palsy associations um my role here i'm the vice president of community and government liaison so i'm gonna just give a few highlights uh, in terms of the budget and for those that are interested in the cd path system i'm gonna give some information on that as well so we know that the budget was passed and approved on April 20th. After several delays, it finally was approved on April 20th. Um, there were, we were advocating for several things. One of the things we were advocating was for housing and transportation. The final budget gives OPWDD $15 million for developing housing for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. There are also regulatory changes that will make it easier to build affordable houses just in general. The state hopes this will lower housing prices over time. The state also made changes to regulations about when a landlord can ask you to leave and how much they can raise your rent. 
These changes start and apply to New York City, but other areas in the state can choose to adapt them as well. So they left that door kind of open for other states. Landlords in large, older buildings will not be able to raise your rent more than 10%. They cannot evict you if you follow the rules of your lease. So it's very important that you know your lease and follow those rules not to get evicted. There were not significant changes to transportation accessibility at the statewide level this year. There is continued support from the state for congestion pricing in New York City, which will generate money for public transit by charging fees to vehicles entering Manhattan. And I'm sure Chris can expand on that subject later. Um, the ask for better pay for DSPs, we did ask for that. We wanted a 3.2% COLA or cost of living adjustment and $4,000 direct support wage enhancement. That's what we were asking for. However, the final budget did give money to raise pay for staff, but did not give as much as we wanted. The COLA or the cost of living adjustment was only 2.84%, not the 3.2% that we wanted. So 1.7 must go to help pay people with that work with work directly with people with developmental disability. And 1.14% can be spent how providers want to. Um and the reason why we're there, the ask was for providers to also get the 3.2 is because providers also have to pay for light, gas, insurance, and all of that goes up. The cost has gone up. So that's why we were asking for the 3.2 across the board for everyone. Okay. Um, there was no direct support wage enhancement. We were asking for the $4,000 for DSPs. We did not get that. We asked for better pay for CDPA staff and to reverse cuts that the governor proposed. In the final budget, there were no changes to the CDPA pay or CDPA, and we prevented cuts to it um, that the governor wanted to implement. The state passed a change to CDPA that will eliminate the existing fiscal intermediaries in favor of a single, just one, for-profit fiscal intermediary across the state. That large fiscal intermediary can subcontract with independent living centers and others to offer services. There is a lot we do not know about how this change for the CDPA will work. But we will continue to get information, and, and as we get information, we will pass it on to you. Um, if you want to, just to give a little more details in terms of or what the CD pod system is going to be. Um, thought I heard somebody. But the CDPA, which stands for Consumer Direct Personal Assistant, is a self-directed home care. So some people with disabilities use this, the Consumer Direct Personal Assistant, or CDPA, to receive personal care at home and in the community. The CDPA is supervised by the Department of Health, not by OPWDD. Some people sometimes confuse it, but it is supervised by the Department of Health or DOH. So the CDPA allows people to hire and manage their own staff. It also, um, the CDPA staff are paid by fiscal intermedi intermediaries. There are currently over 600 fiscal intermediaries in New York. The budget passed this um, in April by the governor and the legislator makes changes to that, to the fiscal intermediaries and to the CDPA in New York. New York will choose a single organization to be the fiscal intermediary for CDPA for all of New York State. The new fiscal intermediary will ch be chosen 
and it will be a large for-profit organization. Most of the organizations that could be chosen are publicly owned and also traded on the stock market because it is a for-profit organization. Once the and fiscal intermediary is chosen, that large organization will subcontract with independent living centers who provide fiscal intermediary services. So those independent living centers will be able to continue providing the services. The large fiscal intermediary will also be able to subcontract with culturally competent, smaller fiscal intermediaries who serve a culturally specific community. Um, with this new system, people may have a little choice, but not as much as before. So that is a concern. Um, people can choose to receive fiscal intermediaries from your an independent living center, culturally competent organization, but these will not be overseen by a larger for-profit fiscal intermediary. Um, there was an advocacy against increasing for-profit providers in our system. The concern is that a desire for profit may make services less person-centered. And we know that we have been trying over the years to make our system more person-centered. That's our objective. So there's concern that that may not happen with the larger fiscal intermediaries. Um, we are also advoc the advocacy against difficult transition. So we don't know how this transition is gonna happen how much difficult it's gonna to be to transition to this new system. So that is a concern as well. So we will continue to be concerned that people having to change their fiscal intermediary may have their services interrupted if this is not well planned. So we will continue to advocate that when the change happens, that the transition may be a smooth for um, the population that we serve for the individuals and for their families. It's important that this transition, because sometimes parents and families get boggled down by the system and everything that needs to be done. So we want to strongly advocate for this transition to be smooth for everyone and that they do not get dropped or, um, in the process, okay? Right now, the new fiscal intermediary has not been chosen, so we do not know who this first, who it will be. Um, and we do not know the changes that will be happening sometimes in 2025. So it's not this year, it's next year. For now, your fiscal intermediary service will likely remain the same for right now. So we're looking at 2025, uh, for changes that may occur. So there may be some benefit to this change. The fiscal intermediary services may become more consistent across New York State, and a large fiscal intermedi intermediary may be better at helping people find staff. But the concern is the transition period, the lack of choice, and profit incentives for the large organizations. So that concludes um, my highlight regarding the budget and the CD pot. If anyone has any questions, feel free. Thank Maria. you so much, Maria. I mean, that was such an amazing presentation. Quick to the point, that's why, you know what, you've got to know who are your partners and what they're expert in. So I thank you, Maria, for making us look good and you getting all that information and your expertise. Again, you, you both have my email and Maria's email in case of anything. Please feel free. It's good to have this information. So when you don't have it, you do feel at loss. So being a part of this um, Family Support Service Advisory Council meeting with a parent or provider, you're getting some good juicy gems right here in this meeting. Again, thank you, Deborah and Chris, and thank you, Maria, for being you're very my welcome. astute so co-chair in this, um, in this um, journey. Thank you. So anyone have any questions, uh, please feel free. Uh, ladies, uh, ladies, uh, yeah, hold well, on a second. Guys, one second. You guys forgot. I'm next. I um, have to get... No, I'm going to introduce you, Chris, but Deborah has a question. 
Chris, let me just say something to Maria. It's really important. Mm -hmm. Okay, Maria, my dear, you did a great yes. explanation. And there's something very important you did, and I'm going to compliment you. Oh, thank you. You made sure to tell everybody out there in our video world that they have to know which agency is controlling what. I appreciate that you said that. Yes, crucial agency, but I want her, everybody to hear this. I don't know how many times I've been screamed at. Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I say that? It's OPW, did you know? It's O. It's oh, I mean, and I tell everyone. First of all, I tell everyone, calm down. I, everyone has the right to be angry, but it's how you deliver. Mm -hmm. I'm proposing with you and Lucina that we're going to set up a couple of workshop trainings on this. Which agency do you make the complaint to? Because mm -hmm. truthfully, you can't. If Department of Health, and I'm talking about statewide, controls the state, controls that New York State. Yelling at OPWDD doesn't do anything. They don't control Social Security. They don't control Medicaid. They don't control the SNAP program. So we need to also educate both everybody, and that includes agencies as well as families, who controls and who does what. We also need to educate them that what the city council is responsible for and does our, in New York City, who's our local, who does what as well as the state assembly and state senate how you explained everything was fantastic so i want to thank you and before anybody else said anything and before you introduce christopher mm -hmm. i had getting because i wasn't going to forget and i didn't want to forget but i wasn't so I drank enough kinkle tea this morning but i want everybody to understand that we're going to be working and doing these trainings year round because you need to know who and what to complain to, not just scream and then ex then expect us to be able to pick the ball up. Now you have to work with us, but you also we have to make sure we do it to the correct person. Again, thank you, and Maria. Now have fun. You can introduce yep. Mr. <laughs> thank you so much, Deborah. So next, I'm gonna uh, pass it on to my colleague, um, Christopher Grieve, who is the guru of all things right, in right, detail, right, right, and right. he's a strong advocate, Grieve, and he's a strong advocate. So, Chris, take it away. For the only fairness, I'm just gonna say, since I did, I did that last thing wrong earlier, so we're even. <laughs> it's even. It's Chris, all you're good. such a good trooper. Hello. Very true. Oh, you you did her name wrong. No, Lucina, <laughs> not with us. He knows I got an award that has grief on it. And let me tell you, yeah, now I the know. other girls are laughing about it. But let me it's just mine, let me, it's, it's, well, it, it, it's all good anyway. Mine. But let me also now let me add my little little magic because we do got some good news. Funny, and we just did some funny news, which you know I'm gonna have. We gotta have a mix of sense of humor time because that's where there's good medicine since we're in brooklyn we can get good penicillin matzo ball soup or some chicken noodle soup but today i'm going to discuss a little bit of something that everyone's been asking me this one question and they're driving me mashugana i'm going to use the yiddish way as you know folks last month we had q um Carmel Awaro, who was our chief access accessibility. As you see on this screen, there is a website. Yes, people, take a picture. It will last longer. <laughs> and the reason I'm doing a little thing is the information is there. Yelling at a person is not going to solve anything. We're lucky we're not living in New Jersey or going down south. As you know, the fare the other states are going higher. Lucky our fare has not gone up even higher. But at the same time, we are MTA, as well as the Accessibility Chief, which Carmelo Wara did speak last time. And if anyone wants a copy of that video, it will be available at the end of this week. Actually, it is available if you type in my name, which is on the screen. It says Christopher D. Grice. And you don't realize you'll see a picture of Kamala Wara, who spoke at the last month's information discussing the accessibility. 
as you know, there are going to be some procedures, meetings coming up. Uh, as of right now, all five bar well, I'm going to say, actually, it's, it's five boroughs. All five boroughs, DDs and advisories, are supporting this. I just finished with the Bronx. They're actually a very thrilled because they can finally say, oh, we can finally get stations up to date. It. But it's not just stations. It's making them more fully accessible, not just elevators and ramps. Lighting, special devices to be there for persons who are deaf or can't see. We need to make sure that continues. But transportation is not just the one place we have to deal with. And it's actually on the DD Council's website as well as the advisory. Next week, not far from Lucina's location, which he's hiding now, is the HAC Pucker hearing. It will be really nice to see all the agencies attending this HAC Pucker hearing, which is next week at Keynes County Hospital. If you didn't have time to register, you can register at the door. Actually, you still have time because the last day to register is this Friday. But call them, email them, torment them. But the main thing is, is as you know, HAC Health and Hospitals has been helping our population for a long time. So that's one thing we need to encourage them all. Now, the other thing is, is, is I know it's been mentioned a hundred times, get the families, agencies today. Let's get families, elector officials. I know Lucina and Marie and Debbie will agree with me. Get the elector officials. We need their staff. If they're here today, I will say God bless America, but some of them who have been attending our meetings in the past, they need to come. It is not that hard to do virtually. If I could do virtually, even on my cell phone, they can attend and take it seriously. But we are not the only ones here. We have to do it. We as a community have to keep moving and advocating on this. And the reason I'm moving the screen this way, if you, have an ex if you want MTA accessibility to come to do a presentation on not just congestion prices, but Omni, because this has been a question that's been brought up to my attention, there's their email address. You want their newsletter, there you go. But we need to remind everyone to please, as an individual and as an advocate for 30 years, elected officials do attend community boards, community councils, civil associations, and certain events. Bug them. Make sure you have a picture in your pocket. And make sure agencies, if you see them, give them your information. Share their information. Because the more we keep our local community stronger and unite in keeping our community safe, we will get things accomplished. I don't have to mention the budget, but budget is important. But I will suggest everyone, please, let's do our part. And let's get things accomplished. So far, we have getting stations getting accessible. We're seeing other agencies are getting stronger, thank God but there are some are not. We need to work together and let's keep our, our egos, our fighting on the side. Let's work together on this. It is important that we get making sure that services are in there, especially health, especially the, our parks, especially now we're coming into warm weather season we need to make sure that every family has an air conditioner or a special one or making sure everyone has a fun time because you know that July is Disability Prime Month. We should be celebrating 34 years what we've been doing, keeping places truly accessible. And just to remind everyone, if you have a complaint about DOT, MTA, you know they have somewhere like the same email you see here. MTA has theirs. There is an MTA log place called Customer Feedback. Just Google it in, as Lucina said it earlier. Google it in, Customer Feedback. Or find out who's your elector official. You know voting is, you know, we have election season. Vote. I don't care what party you're from. Vote is the very important thing. And you can count, and you have to keep, you're the ones have to keep an eye on these officials 
to say, are you going to work with our disability group? And it could be seniors as well. We have to keep them. Their promise must be kept. We have fishers in the past kept their word. But now, as you know, we're getting a lot of new ones. We have to make sure of that. Today and continue to the future for the next generation to the following generation. So I challenge everyone today to please find one or two elected officials, city, state, and federal, as well as 10 your local community council, which you can type in your local precinct, find out when their meetings are. Now, if anyone is at the in the South Brooklyn, like where the 6-1 is, they're meeting tonight at 7 o'clock. But other precinct meetings, yes, they do meet in the evening. Bring your, into, bring your son and daughter with you. Does it not hurt to have them? Because they need to see that. It is not that hard to enjoy a day to get them. And just remember, August, the first Tuesday in August is National Night Out. It's a free event. Get all that information. You will also see elected officials there. Bug them. Bug them. When I say bug them, bug them. When I say bug them, means B-U-G, means bug them, like a bug. And don't stop until you see an answer from them and making sure that they're getting, they're helping us. And that's including our NYPD, our FDMY, and our e and definitely our EMS, which are part of FDMY. But very important, work with your local community. There's community boards, all 18. They don't mean in summer, but they still have you have this month and next month before they go on summer retail. Their community boards do meet. Yes, a lot of meetings meet in the evening, but guess what? You'll always get a chance to see sometimes elected official representatives, get some information, how to talk to the, the community board chair, district manager. They, a lot of them don't realize they know, not just they know me, they know Lucina, they know Maria, they know Debbie. I know that a lot of us who are here today, they know us. And each time we do the, when I do the Development Disability Resource Fair, we did have elected officials popping in. And they're seeing who these agencies are. Agencies today, your outreach is extremely important. You may not have a table, but putting your information on an information table at a library, it's very important. You may not realize, but you can be helping families. They may need a help. What services they can help. It doesn't matter if it's in Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, Bronx, any borough, even upstate New York, if you have representing upstate. The libraries is the strongest tool. And as you know, thank God the libraries are still with us, but we still need to keep an eye on our, our city officials that the full funding for libraries must still be in there. So please, let's work together. Do you can do, but share the information. What I'm saying, what Maria's been saying, what Latina is saying, and what Debbie's saying. Because let me tell you this, I am one person. Maria is one. Debbie is one. Lucina is one. And I know Lucina is somewhere here, somewhere. Her husband. But we can't do this alone. We have to do it together as one. Please, share this information, what I've been saying. Thank you. And at this time, since I'm the last one, I'm challenging yeah. everyone in this room except Maria and Debbie and Lucina. I am asking agencies question have any questions. Uh, and I'm challenging the question. We say anything else, I'm going to add something. Go ahead. And I want everybody to understand right now, the Brooklyn Public Library, especially inclusive services, we need to advocate very strongly to have their funding increased, not decreased. We need to sign support letters, whether through emails, we'll work to make sure they're with us at the at the family support fair. We will, you need to bug your elected, uh, local elected officials. We need to have seven day a week service. I'll even accept six, but not five. We need to make sure because the libraries 
help us. It's a place where our babies, our children from, from birth to you're a senior can get the help and you don't wanna lose this. This is a very good safety net for us and our families, especially our children. So please, we all have to advocate and we need to work together to restore funding. If we can even have, if, I'm, if they ask for funding, they're asking for donations, I will leave that up to you, but we do need to advocate to let the elected officials know how important we want all our libraries to stay open. The advisory council has to thank because of the partnership with inclusive services, we've been able to go around Brooklyn to different libraries of so families who can't always know where we are, have been finding out who we are. And let me tell you, we've been helping a lot of people more than you realize. So please support our local Brooklyn public libraries. Thank you. Okay, hey, Christopher, you see who was raising their hands with questions? I'm sorry, I just had my uh, microphone muted the other way. Uh, there is a question in the chat um, before I proceed. Uh, and it's actually twice, so I'm good before I do that. Um, all right, because there is a chat, there's one chat, it's in the private section. So I'm just letting you ladies know that they asked for not to mention their name because they do want to mention a question. So they're actually following procedure. Okay. Uh, so well, I'm going to read, I'm going to read the private questions. I have five of them. So I'm going to start with, uh, oh, before I do that, Maria and Lucina, there's a private chat thing I sent to you. So you have the numbers for your attendance. I see your head. No problem. <laughs> okay. Um, question first, this is for, is Lucina still with us? Or Mar Maria, I know you're here too. Uh, Marie, you can I'm actually here. pass this. No, I know you're here. I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you. That's not... but, uh, Maria, this question's for you. Uh, and Lucina, if you can hear this too, this is related to you. I'm guessing you're on the phone or Wayne stole you again, which I'm going to pick on him. Um, there is a, there is a um, concern that, and this is a question that I'm going to do, a, uh, they're very, very up disturbed and upset that four other boroughs are more active, but not one borough. And I think uh, Debbie knows what I'm talking about. It's actually next door to us in the same island we live in, which is, I'm going to say Queens. I'll answer this. Uh, can I finish first? Go ahead. Thank you. Um, this is not, they've been trying to ask for assistance, but they feel like that the Office with People with Disability, not the DD councils, but OPWDD, that they're not getting back to us. Uh, they said if they try to reach someone, they said only two people respond, but then they, they feel, we feel like they're very disrespectful to us. And they did ask me to say this, this, I could say the, what, what issue it is a race. It's a Asian community okay. not responding. Okay. Let me give this complete. Let me answer this correct fast. I totally understand the complaint. I'd like you to put it in writing. You have the right to complain to Albany, OPWDD's Albany. And if you need help with the complaint, please put it in, but we need to put it in writing. And if you find more than one parent or family is getting the same thing, putting it in writing. And if it can't be, you can't write in English, I understand, we'll get We'll ask an agency who can help us translate, but OPWDD can translate. They do have the ability to translate verbally and the written, as well as verbally in the written languages. So I apologize, even though I would never do that, but you have the right to complain and don't be afraid you have that right. You need to uh, let Madam Chair, just to let you know. know. Not, they, they said it's not you. you. They said, and I'll say this for the record. I know who it is. What it is. No, 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 I no. know what they, it is. I just want to be very clear because uh, they're thinking 
the Brooklyn Council, that's the Brooklyn DD and the advisory, because they feel that you guys help us more than the next borough. So please understand they're not upset, but they wanted to bring this to an attention. They feel like no one is hearing them in the other borough. You're invited to come to the statewide meeting on June 12th virtually. You have that right to make the complaint there too. And I will, and I also will tell you this. Yes, I know you do not may be not living in our this borough Brooklyn, but that doesn't mean we will not figure ways to help you get the correct service that are appropriate for your child. So be aware, be advised. You're also more than welcome to come to the family support fair on Wednesday, June 5th. Yes, we will again try to figure the right way to assist you and get the right help for you. You have the right to make those complaints, though, and do not be, do not worry about reprisal, because if they do, you let us know, and we will help you know what you have to do. I will not go into full details because I will not break HIPAA, but I will always help a family. I don't care what part of New York City. I even have helped families that are in Rockland, Westchester, as well as Long Island, but I do let everybody know. At, well, Connecticut, I sent them to their OP, their form of OPWDD. But for New York, outside New York City, I try to contact, push it to their contacts in their local DDROs, or I have you complain to Albany, only because we're on fis different fiscal years than you, than those counties. But do not. I am extremely sorry if you feel that way. I don't blame you, but you have that right to complain. And putting it in writing is my best suggesting as well. If you can't or you want to get someone you know can speak for you or your, the group of that, how you feel you're being treated, and complain at the statewide public session, you are allowed to do that too. I have complained at the statewide. And then before everyone says, oh, you're the member of the statewide, they'll never yell at you. And that's not true. I don't know how many times I've been screamed, yelled at threatened, bullied, and guess what? My late mother called me the iron bamboo slash butterfly. Everyone thinks I'm so delicate. You push me, I'll wait, and I'll smack you back because I'll come back and I wait, and I will make sure everything's put. So with that, don't worry. We will figure ways to help you correctly. Is there any other questions for us in the chat? I'm going to mute. Okay, uh, not a problem, but let me get to the next question. Uh, Marie, if you're still there, there's a question for you. You mentioned a budget question. Um, yeah, you mentioned some budget, uh, some of the budget. Um, a budget question that was mentioned, uh, they want to know is, is there any new changes uh, regarding across the board, they're asking. What's the question, though? Well, for starters, um, they're asking about any updates on OPWDD budget. You okay, the budget. Go ahead. No, you. I just finished. That's what I said. They just oh. mentioned. <laughs> okay. Um. Initially, we were asking for three point two cola. Um. Is that what they're referring to? Or be that's yes. Did... That's one. Okay. That's one. Okay. So what? What? Pass was a 2.84% COLA, but it was 1.7 was restricted, which means that only goes for salaries for direct support professionals, that 1.7. And then the 1.14% is unrestricted, which means organizations can use it however they want. So it wasn't, it was a small increase for staff pay, but, um, not as much as we wanted, and the organizations did not get that 3.2%. I hope that answered the question that they had. Is yes, that they it? Did. Yes, they did. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Uh, and also, just to add in to everyone, just to add Maria, um, and we know we do put this, Brian does put it in, on the DD Council's website, and we also we have it on our news update page as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of this information, as Maria is saying, is actually on our website. 
So please, everyone, check that on our on our news update page. And as a reminder, it does get updated every weekend. If something news comes up, we do make sure everyone gets that update, even on our Facebook group page as well. I know the DD does it too as well. Uh, the last and just, question on the just just a just yeah. a brief personal information: the final budget that was approved gets OPWDD fifteen million for developing housing for people with in the intellectual and developmental disabilities. I just thought I might throw that in. And thank, thank you. you for saying and thank you for saying that, Maria, because that was that's that's the way we got we gotta make that clear. Also in the chat, I did put it in twice about some tip that Joanne Simon uh Joanne Simon speaker. You bring something up, this will help everyone. It is on the chat. Uh and I will be mentioning to people how to save the chat. So you don't so you want to get that detail. Um the last question on the private section is and I'm glad someone else is here. We've been having issues. No one is responding to crisis issues. What can we do of dealing with crisis issues if no one is getting back to us? And I know we have someone here, but it's not that agency. It's another agency. All right. Um, I'm going to say this. Um, if they're not get, I'm going to just keep this short to the point. If they're not getting back to you, you need to email the advisory council. You need to email me at the Brooklyn Family Support Service Advisory Council. And then I will forward your complaint to the right people. And will tell you that I I understand the frustration. I was when start first started in New York State. Dr. Jill Petlinger put me on the committee. It is unfortunately you see for our population you have to prove you have a development ability before you get the right uh, correct help for the behaviors and the challenging. But I understand the crisis. It, there's a lot of crises. I'm not going to tell you. I'm fixing it. We'll figure out who to contact so you can get the right help. So please contact us by email so we can figure out what to do because it's easier than for us to forward it to the right people. Thank you. Uh, Is there anyone else? Just to let you know that she's not from our borough. She's actually in not even Queens. She's actually, you can say, she's in the border between Queens and Nassau County. Okay, I understand that, and that also causes an issue, but at the same time, I still need to know so I can send it to, forward it to the right people. Mm -hmm. I understand. I don't, I can't, and I will not, as I said, I'm not talking as a, oh, I know how to fix the crisis. No, I don't, because I don't know the crisis, but I will not speak about it in public, but in writing, we can then figure out where and what to do to help this family. And as I said, again, you don't have to live in my borough for me to figure out where to help get, send you for the help or get the help to come to you. Okay. Do they understand? Cause uh, I'm not looking at the chat. Uh, I apologize no, no. why I don't, because I am having a little issue with my no, 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 right. No, uh, no, no, just letting you guys know the chat, those three questions were in the private section chat, which I have. Uh, I'm not touching anything only because no, also no, they no, don't no, want to. No, no, no. No, no. Up. Because, because the one thing I'm saying is because they because they don't want to be mentioned because I don't want to mention the, it either. Let's not go any further, okay? Yeah, if, not, just please tell now, them, email me. Just letting you got ladies know before I proceed. Does anyone have any questions? Can you please raise your hand if you want to say something? Second question is is uh, you still have a little time to put your questions into the chat, which I'm going to read the regular part chat. So right now I have not seen anyone's hand up. So I am going to go to, uh, first of all, just to let everyone, just to let you ladies know, we received a lot of thank you um, on this. Um, I can actually mention their names because uh, there is one. Carrie mentioned, thank you, Chris. We understand the current budget. Libraries will lose six days service on July 1st. I have cut back future on buying books as one question that's not mentioned. good yeah and uh, ladies and gentlemen that is a very scary thing uh, me, because they need 
there's but more to it. I know there's a lot more, no, but no, we no. need to help you. Let me finish. The next question she wrote, because it's combined, that A, she said thank you to you. The link to contact to your officials to support the library, she has the link here, which I'm going to copy and paste it on, which is the www.brooklynlibrary.org slash, and I'm going to say stand up. So there is a link that you guys could please do that. And just for the record, I did save it on our end, but if anyone else wants to save it on their chat, please do so right now. Uh, it's on the right, when you open the chat of your area, there is a, on the left, on the right is a down arrow with a capital A. You click on that, that will save the chat. Once you click on that, on that, which I'm just sharing right now where Terry wrote, uh, you will see, once you click on that down arrow with the capital A, it will say down the chat, click on the down the chat, but make sure that the level is on. So therefore it's on, and once you click the down chat, once the meeting ends, or once you signed out, you will see a download coming into you. All, everyone's information, like not the private, but the regular comments or announcements are there, and it is available. Just want everyone to know that. Okay, I want to add something into. I want you, everybody to know that for the last month, since I, when I, the reason I'm going to say for the last month, the, I've already been, of course, advocating, but the Brooklyn Public Library has sent me asking me, you know, like, well, I signed these letters. Let me tell you, every time I sign the letters and send them out through email and social media, I have been getting thank, I've been getting the elected officials acknowledging, of course, my local, but also, we can email any of them on their social media pages. This year is an election year. That means the state assembly, state senate, as well as the United States Senate is up for election. We want to keep, of course, I want Chuck Schumer to stay. He needs to know what our issues are, as well as United States Senate Kristen Gillibrand. We need to let everybody know what the issues are. That includes the presidential elections we need to nothing is too small or trivial everything is important this is for us to have quality of life so please email everybody contact them through social media so that we can advocate to keep this important and vital service for our borough chris anybody else has questions for us or in the chat Uh, at this moment, I am checking, but I I don't have. That's actually it on the chat, but no one has raised their hand at this time. So I'm get. Wait a minute. Now we got a hand raised. Dolores Khan. Dolores Khan, go ahead. Dolores, go ahead, hon. Hi, I'm Doris Kahn. I'm the Outreach Coordinator for New York State Institute on Disability. I first want to make a comment about the meeting being a joint meeting, I appreciate it very much uh, because I'm torn to which meetings to go to. So I was very happy to have all of you uh, at this one location and I got a lot of information and um, I continue. I hope you continue this way and much success. I do want to announce uh, that summer is here and NYSED offers camp reimbursement. So get your applications in. The, the camp has to have a New York State Department of Health certificate. And for more information, you could contact Jackie Tribodi at 929-202-1115, or you could email Jackie at Jack J. Tripodi at NYSEDinc.org. I put that information in the chat. So any questions you have about camp and re camp reimbursement, you can contact Jackie. Thank you. And we hope to see your organization at the Brooklyn Family Support yep. Fair at we will Wednesday. Be there. We will June be there. 5th. So you can then when you're there, you can meet them and talk with them about camp. And in case well, they, you they have could questions. fill out the application right on the spot too. That's right. And we'll and remember everybody register for the fair, right? Okay. Take thank you. 
You're welcome. Anybody else, Christopher? No one else has their hand up. So I am guessing since we have not have anyone else has any questions, comments on anything, just to remind everyone, the next Brooklyn DD Council is the third Monday, because as I remind you, it's because of Memorial Day. So reminding you, the 20th is their next general full council, DD Council meeting. Since the Advisory Council did their joint with provider information and the legislative committee, uh, Dolores, give me one second. Uh, as I remind you, please visit the count, go on the, doesn't matter which website you go on in Brooklyn, they both have the schedules of the meeting dates as well. And sorry, but everyone likes to text me right now, which is not an emergency. Um, but just to let you know, the calendar is on the schedule. If you feel like there's something wrong with the calendar on Brian's end, please email him. Please note he is away on conference. He will get back to you starting next starting Monday. Dolores, you had a hand up? Yeah, I, I just want to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day. I didn't get to that yet, but thank you for saying okay. before me. All right. I didn't know if you were getting to it. Okay. I didn't get to it yet because I didn't end the meeting. <laughs> but I'm guessing you forgot to mention that, so thank you. At least someone else said it instead of me. I didn't hear you, Madam Chair. Or okay. Maria. Okay. Well, Lucina and Maria, are you there, my dears? Maria's here. I want yes, to wish I am. You thank you. I'm here. I'm Maria. I want to wish you and Lucina a very happy Mother's Day. And please, uh, as you know, we la three ladies are working <laughs> together. Yes. We are going to be advocating and working around the year. And that includes summertime, because anytime <laughs> I see an elected official campaigning, that's when I tell, they say, well, you live in this district. I'm chairperson of the Brooklyn Families Put Advisory Council. Last time I look, it's for the full borough. Mm -hmm. Am I right, Maria? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> they, exactly. They say that. And I look at them, I said, uh, or they, I love them, say, well, you live in Community Board 15. Yeah, so I know. Glad you remember. <laughs> now, are you going to help all my families in Brooklyn, including my <laughs> right. child? And they look at me, so everybody, anytime you see a campaign event, I don't care if it's a Republican or Democrat, you bug them. Am I right, Lucina, as well yes, as Maria? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. I have a new client, so Denise is looking. So I wanted to just come back in and say thank you, thank you, Maria, thank you, Deborah, and Chris. Happy welcome. Mother's Day to both of you and as happy well. Mother's happy Mother's Day. Day. Enjoy, enjoy it. Enjoy. Have a blessed comfort. day. Yes. So Thank bye. you. Get back to my clients. Bye. And I'm telling also the fathers who are out there who have also been moms. Yes. Happy Mama's Day to, Mother's Day to you too. Because on Father's Day, I'm honored by my son. I do nice. both. <laughs> right? Thank so her. happy Mother's Day. And as everybody see, you see the hours and everything, please. I'm ending this with besides Happy Mother's Day. Make sure you have everybody registered for the Family Support Fair, yes. Brooklyn's Family Support Fair. If you're an agency, get your booth registration in as fast as possible. If you need, if you have issues or problems, you can email us. You see our emails are up. You see that. Make sure you also show up, visit the local community boards. Make sure that you visit your local precinct council civics. They'll all work together. If you're also whatever political party or club you're a member of, tell them they need to advocate for this population. With that, um, I'm going to say thank you, you go, for everything. Before, uh, before you go, does Latina Marie yes. have anything they want to add? I know. No, you I'm, know. I'm good. I'm good. Thank yes, you so continue. much. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Yes, thank yes, you. Thank you, everybody. Just be involved. Yes, Bye. and please keep up with us. Bye. Thank you for attending. Please keep up and keep up your attendance. Please keep coming to these meetings virtually. We really need your help and support so we can all work together. We need your communication. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and have a love, have a great day. The sun is out. 
I know Lucina's running outside to get some air. <laughs> which, I, which, I, which you know I'm going to pick on her later. I'll pick on her anyway. <laughs> but thank you guys for coming to the joint meeting. And we hope to see you all at the legislative committee. I'm sorry, the uh, Brooklyn DD Council full meeting on the Media 20th. Council. And the family support fair. Thank you, Marissa. <laughs> Too many meetings this morning. Thank you. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot. There's no transition meeting this month at all. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you all. Bye bye. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Bye.